Hi guys, I'm Lauren Vitali and on this episode of Lauren in the Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for braised short ribs. Now this is a really easy and simple recipe. It's really not using any crazy ingredients we haven't used here before uh, whenever we're braising something like brisket or anything like that, but I figured this is a perfect recipe to share with you right now because A, it's fall time, it's a really cozy recipe and B, this could definitely be a star on your holiday table, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatnot. If you're feeling like making something a little bit different, this is perfect. The ingredients are really simple and there's a few of them. You'll need some short ribs. These are beef short ribs. You'll need a total of about five and a half pounds. These are about eight big short ribs. You'll need some fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, celery, onion, garlic, carrots. I've got some tomato paste, some beef stock, some red wine, vegetable oil, salt and pepper, and you'll need some all-purpose flour. Now, the first thing you want to do is get your oven preheated to 375, and then what I have here is a big Dutch oven that I've coated with some vegetable oil, and I have that coming to about medium-high heat. I'm going to turn it up a little bit, and I'm going to season my flour because what I'm going to do is dredge my short ribs in the flour, but I want to be able to give them some good flavor right off the bat. Now, this is a recipe you really can make all year long, all year round, but short ribs are really rich. They've got a good amount of fat on them, so it's really something I make mostly um, around this time of year just because I feel like in the summertime, um, it's just a little bit too heavy of a piece of meat for me, but you can certainly make these whenever you feel like it. I mean, the world's your pickle. Shake off any excess flour and then put this in your hot pot. Oh, you know what? I'm going to wait just one more minute for that. I'm just going to pile these over here. I want the oil to be a little bit hotter. And you're going to have to do these in batches. I'm probably going to do four and four, do two batches, um, only because you don't want to overcrowd the pan because you'll end up steaming your meat rather than searing it and getting a really good color on it. Otherwise, you really could skip the whole step if you were just going to steam it. So I am just going to shake these off. You really don't have to do all sides because we're going to just braise them on two sides. Uh, we're going to sear them on two sides. And if you don't have a Dutch oven that can go right into the oven, just start this in a pan and then transfer these into like a big baking pan and put them in the oven. Okay, it's got a good sizzle. I'm going to cook four at a time, letting them get nice deep golden brown on both sides. And I'll move on to the second batch and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. I seared my short ribs on both sides. You can see they're really deep golden brown color. Now, I took some of the fat out because short ribs are really fatty and they do give out a lot. And they're going to give out a lot more as they roast, so as they're in the oven, so don't worry. But I left some back here, and to that I'm going to add my veggies. Oh, I love me a good sizzle. I'm going to sprinkle these with a little salt and pepper just to make sure we kind of season every layer of the dish. Good amount. And then we're just going to give these a stir and we're going to let these cook for about seven minutes or so or until they've cooked down a little bit and developed just a touch of color. My veggies look awesome. Now as you can see, I left the cloves of a garlic whole and I did that for a reason. I feel like when you leave them whole, they don't give you so much of a strong garlic flavor but more of a mellow garlic flavor and if it cooks for a really long time in the oven, they kind of get really, really sweet and that's what I want here so I left it like that. So now I'm going to add in a good amount of tomato paste. I'm just going to empty out these last two tubes. I have two tubes, I don't know how that happened, that are on their way out so I figured I might as well use them both because there's not a whole lot left in each one, and you'll need about a quarter cup of tomato. Did that just happen? That did, but that's okay. I will clean that off. All right, get that all in there, and then just give it a stir. You kind of want to wake up that tomato paste. It's been sitting in the tube for a while, so you want to make sure it's alive and it smells good. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my red wine, you want to use a red wine you would drink. This red wine is from Club W. I've mentioned it before. I have a whole sort of page on my website explaining Club W. It's a wine subscription every month. Uh, if you want to know more information, especially about the specific wine I'm using, uh, which is the Cabernet, make sure you go ahead and check that out. And there's a special coupon code if you want to get two for the pri uh, three for the price of two. So it's definitely something worth checking into. I'm adding about two and a half cups of red wine to my veggie mixture. Now I know a lot of people are going to ask whether or not they can keep the wine, can leave the wine out. 
And in most cases, you can leave out the wine and just substitute more stock, which you can in this case, but it is going to affect the flavor of your dish because uh, short ribs are supposed to be braised in a good amount of uh, wine. So I wouldn't skip it, but it's up to you. I'm adding some stock, which for me nowadays is just some water with some of this bouillon base. It just makes things a lot easier. So pop a good amount of that in there. Get off my spoon. And then just kind of stir it in just to make sure you don't have a big clump. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my herbs, which this is just some fresh thyme and a big sprig of rosemary. You could just use a couple of sprigs. This for my garden. And I'm going to take my short ribs and plop them right in there, make sure that they're all submerged in the liquid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to pop this into the oven for about two and a half hours to two, you know, two, almost three hours or so. Just keep an eye on it. The meat will fall off the bone. It'll be so, so tender. Uh, and you'll want to check on it periodically after every about half hour or so to make sure that your liquid isn't reducing too fast. If it is and it's looking really dry in like an hour and it still has an hour and a half left to go, add a bit more stock. It's really forgiving. It's really easy. All the hard job is going to happen in the oven while you sit back and have yourself a glass of, the, uh, of wine while it's waiting and while it's sitting there anyway. So, in the oven it goes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. This is a heavy one. My short ribs were braising in the oven for around three hours and I just took the short ribs out onto a platter, let those cool a bit. And now to my sauce, there's something crucial you have to make sure you do, and that is to remove this layer, which you can see as it cools, it starts to set. There's a layer of fat that just gets right on top of that, and that's really not something you want in your final dish. So you just have to be patient and run your ladle on the very top, very surface, of your sauce and it kind of all piles up in there. Now, you can do something even easier and even faster and that is pop this into the fridge and when it cools, the fat solidifies and it gets all white and you just kind of scoop it. It gets all hard and you scoop it right off. It's really easy to do. But I don't have that kind of time so I'm just going to patiently go ahead. And you can see it. You can see the fat in the white bowl. So I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and get as much of it out of there as I possibly can because however delicious this is, I do feel like it, you would completely ruin it if you were to serve it drowned in fat. It would coat the roof of your mouth and you wouldn't really be able to taste any of those fabulous flavors. So go ahead and take the extra step and get it out of there. I removed just about all of it. Now, if you want to at this point, you could puree the sauce and have it really nice and smooth. I'm going to leave it like that because I know that my guests, my husband and myself, I love the carrots and I love seeing the vegetables and things like that. So for now, I'm just going to serve one. I'm going to serve this one right here. And as you can see, it does fall off the bone. So you'll have the bone like right there. And obviously, I wouldn't serve this by itself. I would serve this with some mashed potatoes, a little bit of polenta, something along those lines, um, but I kind of wanted to share this recipe with you just because I want to do. So let's go ahead and give this a go. You really don't have to really cut it, and there's going to be a layer of fat on the short rib as well, so you don't have to eat that if you don't want to, but boy, is that delicious. It melts in your mouth tender, like falls apart. Mmm. Mmm. These are worthy of being on your holiday table and stick to stay tuned for a future episode I'm going to show you a really quick way that you can use up a couple of these that are left over if you have any leftovers but if you want to get this recipe go to lartinthekitchen.com it will be there waiting for you I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I'll see you next time bye bye